All right, today I'm going to work on this door hinge. This is the lower door hinge off of a 67 Mustang. This is a cast steel door hinge. It's not stamped steel. So this one came from a car that was built early in the uh, 1967 model year. Everything I have found on the internet seems to say that they switched from this cast steel piece to a stamped steel hinge sometime during the 67 production year. It's a big heavy piece and really what's wrong with this one uh, is this is this arm on it. This is the arm that limits how far the door will open and it also controls when you open the door uh, how loose the door swings on the hinge. You know the door just it doesn't swing wide open when you open it and then it doesn't come slamming back shut if you're on a hill or something like that because of this arm. And the way that it's supposed to work is this arm is supposed to uh, roll against this roller on this pin. But what has happened on this one is the arm is now cutting into the, the pin. And I don't know if you can really see that. So instead of rolling, it's cutting. And it makes it really hard to open and close the door. It makes a lot of noise. You can buy a rebuild kit, and that's what I have here. And it comes with all of the different parts that you would need to rebuild this hinge. You know, it's got the pin and the bushings. It has that lever arm and the roller, um, the roller that goes around the pin. It has two other pins, because there are actually three pins that are pressed into this hinge. And it has the spring. So really, the first thing that I need to do is remove this spring. So here's my plan. I'm going to take some of this picture hanging wire and I'm going to run that down the spring from the top end here as close down to the bottom as I can get it and then uh, close the spring down, compress the spring and then tighten the wire up and then when I open the hinge again and the spring wants to expand, the wire will hold it closed and the arm will have moved away and I'll be able to take the spring out. That's the plan. So here's the picture hanging wire. It's kind of thin so I doubled it up on itself. And all I'm going to do is just take it, uh, put a little bit of a kink on the end of it, not very much. I'm going to feed it down through the top of the spring here and try and get it to come out you know, somewhere near the top. It doesn't have to be all the way at the end. And that's it. I'm just going to leave that piece in there loose. And now I'll put another piece on the opposite side of this plate so that I'll have two wires in there to hold the spring when it's closed. All right, the two wires are in there. They're loose. One's on the top, one's on the bottom. So now I will open the door and compress the spring. Okay. Now that the spring is compressed, I'm going to tighten up these wires. I'm going to coil them up and hopefully when I close the door and allow the spring to open up, the wires will hold the spring in the compressed condition and it should just fall right out or it'll be a lot easier to remove. So let's open the door, or close the door rather. It's really hard to do, especially with no door on it. So you don't have the leverage. Okay. They held a little bit, I think. This spring is loose in there now. I can. I should be able to just work that out. Everything's a lot looser. So let's see if I can just push this spring in. How far do I have to push it? Okay. You know what? I'm going to put a wire through one of these holes. And that way, if this thing wants to launch, when I free it, not going to come flying over here and hit me in the head. I'm trying to figure out how to do this so that when I put the new spring in, 
you know, you don't screw it all up trying to put it in. There we go. And that was it. Okay, so now the spring is off. This arm, you can see how this thing's wiggling up and down. To remove this, the pin that's in here, um, I'm going to drive it out. And this is the replacement pin. And you can see that it's got those grooves on the side of it um, all the way up and down its length. So it's going to be hard to drive out for the full length of the pin. It's not something that you can hit it a few times and you know get the part that's holding it into the, uh, the hinge out and then the rest of it just falls out. You have to drive this thing all the way out. So I'm going to use, a, I'm going to start off with this tapered punch. It, it's working. All right. So now we can move on and take out um, the next pin. Okay, I'm ready to drive out the next pin. This is the replacement one. Again, it's longer. And it's only got the knurling at the very top, which means once I drive this thing about um, a quarter of an inch down, there'll be nothing to hold it in and it'll be a lot easier to separate the two halves of the hinge. So I did wire the half of the hinge that's not clamped in the vise so that it doesn't fall on the ground and crack. So let's give this a shot. Okay, that's just about it. I want to get this thing stuck in here. So now I'll just drive the rest of the pin out. It probably can't pull it out by hand with this cold chisel. All right, pins out. Wow, this is a really tight fit on this guy. Here's the mostly disassembled hinge and the old parts. Uh, on this half, this one still has the old bushings in. So I still have to figure out how to get this pin out. Because like I said before, there's no hole on the bottom that I can use to drive it out. It has this collar around it, that roller collar, which has got a really bad groove cut in it from this bracket. I have decided that the first thing I'm going to try to get this pin out of the hinge is the simplest thing, which is to just clamp it in the vise and try and hammer it off from uh, just hitting it with the hammer. you got to be careful that you don't bend the pin and crack it off inside the hinge so don't go crazy on it but let's see if this can work i don't know i'm gonna try and hammer it from this other side where i got a little more of the hinge that i can actually hit I just don't want to break it off inside the inside the hinge. Uh, no, it's not really working. I don't want to bend it and and break it off, so I'm afraid to hit it too hard. Because if this thing cracks off, you know, then I'm in a lot of trouble. Then I have to drill it out. I really don't want to have to do that. So, try something else. 
All right, so we can't hammer this pin out, so we thought the next best thing would be to cut the collar off, and that way we would have the ledge around the head of the pin to grab onto, and then maybe there would be some way we could pull the pin out using the head. So in order to get this collar off, uh, I took an angle grinder with a grinding disc on it, and just uh, pinched it with a vice grip so the little collar wouldn't spin around, and then just carefully ground back and forth in here and it didn't take very long just a minute or two and I was able to grind all the way through the collar on one side it might be hard to see if I spin this around and then rotate the collar you can now see the the rust and the clean cut on the collar showing that I got all the way through it all the way around so now what I'm going to do is clamp this up in the vise and then just take a cold chisel and a hammer and just try and, and knock this collar off. It should come right off. Okay, so now I'm going to try and knock this collar off of the pin. I just have a little chisel and a hammer and I'm just going to try and see if I can just knock it off. It might just spin. This might not actually work uh, too easily. But let's see what happens. Now that that fails. That that just it just wants to spin right off. So I think what I'm going to have to do is go back out and grind the other side of the pin. I mean the other side of the collar. And if I can just maybe I can just grab it with a pair of pliers and pull it off. It's not really on there all that tight, but still. Not gonna work. All right, I think I'm just gonna have to go back and grind it off. Okay, well it never fails. Uh, I always do something and the camera's not on, but the little collar is off and I didn't have to grind it in half. I can't even find the other piece right now. Here's the, here's the broken half. All I did was take the chisel and this um, tapered punch and put them both on there at the same time, one on each side, and then I just hit the papered punch. I just hit, hit them both at the same time, you know, putting the heads together up here at the top. And when I did that, it wouldn't, it didn't spin, and they both got a hit, and it cracked a little collar right off. So there's a piece of it. The other piece went flying over here. Oh, here it is down here. So here's the collar that got split, and you can see where it's been ground off. So now we have a pin with a shoulder under the head that you can now grab with something, and that'll make it much easier to remove.